But Manwe Sulomo, highest and holiest of the Valar, sat upon the borders of Amon, forsaking not in his thought the outer lands. For his throne was set in majesty upon the pinnacle of Taniquitil, the highest of the mountains of the world. Standing upon the margin of the sea, spirits in the shape of hawks and eagles flew ever to and from his halls, and their eyes could see to the depths of the sea and pierce the hidden caverns beneath the world. Hey everyone, Yoiston here, and I hope you all are doing well, wherever you are in Middle-earth. Today we will be looking at the King of the Valar himself, Lord Manwe. For all of the evils of Melkor, Manwe was ever his foil, and the Lord of the West never abandoned the children of Luvatar. For more information, check out the links to the art, articles, and videos in the description and cards. My friends, thank you all so much for joining me. Let's begin our tale. Manwe was one of the mightiest of the Ainur in the thought of Eru, behind Melkor, whom Iluvatar called Manwe's brother. Indeed, from before the creation of Arda, the great spirits created from the thought of Eru, the Ainur, had different temperaments and mannerisms already, even in the days before time. And Melkor, whose designs were dark and evil, was brother of one, Manwe, who was so compassionate, loving, and merciful that he did not even quite understand the concept of evil and treachery, and yet the ultimate destinies of both were the designs of Eru. Manwe would be the great leader against the discord of Melkor and the music of the Ainur, and his mind would be with the airs and winds of the world. Such would be his domain on Arda itself, for he would be one of three to help shape Arda, even as Melkor tried to interrupt their works and claim the world as his kingdom. Manwe, along with Ulmo of the Waters and Aule of the Earth, helped set the original physical world of Arda, even as other Ainur, the Valar and Maiar, entered into Arda as well. As I have mentioned in some other videos, the main three elements of Middle-earth seem to be the realms of Manwe, Ulmo, and Aule, or Air, Water, and Earth slash Fire, as that is where the three Silmarils end up. Manwe, who would be called the Breath of the World, whose name means Blessed One and Quenya, given to him by the High Elves who came to Valinor, whose other names and titles were Sulumo, Breath of the World of Arda, or Breather, and Elder King, or High King of Arda, was greatest, obviously, in authority of the Valar, Maiar, and any other who walked in Middle-earth, although Manwe was not greatest in power, for that was Melkor. He was the vice-regent of Iru Iluvatar himself, and ruled in Middle-earth from the dwellings of the Valar. He held this position as, of all beings, he best understood the mind of Iluvatar. Even if Mandos delivered the dooms that Iru told him, he only did so at Manwe's bidding. And Manwe was one who was most submitted to Iru, even when doom encroached upon the Valar themselves. He was married to Varda Elentari, the Valier of the Stars, renowned as Elbereth by the Elves. Again, Manwe was holiest of the Ainur, and he did not comprehend evil, letting his compassion and understanding guide his actions. After the Valar moved to Valinor from the Isle of Almaran, Manwe and his wife would come to live in the halls of Ilmarin, upon the mountain Taniquitil. From such a high home, if Varda was beside him, Manwe could see farther than all other eyes, just as Varda could hear more clearly if her husband was beside her. Just as the winds, skies, and atmosphere, or Vale of Arda, were his domains, his greatest servants were the eagles, and probably some other birds of flight as well, as the great eagles were the messengers of Manwe, and brought his good omens over Middle-earth, just as the winds themselves did. Aonwe, a chief of the Maiar, was his herald, and Manwe ruled over the Valar, Maiar, and peoples of Middle-earth as the High King of all. When the elves came to Valinor, they described Manwe as wearing blue robes, with blue eyes as well, and he would carry a scepter of sapphire made for him by the Noldor. Even though the Vanyar, highest of the elves, were his favorite, and abode closest to his mountain and halls, offering him worship. After the war for sake of the elves, before the elves had even awoken, Manwe allowed for Melkor to be imprisoned, and then, during the time when the elves lived in Valinor, Manwe's mercy saw Melkor released from imprisonment, which led to many evils like the destruction of the Two Trees and the War of the Jewels and the hardships of the First Age and beyond. Perhaps if Manwe had better understood the nature of evil, as that was a concept that was entirely foreign to him, many evils would have been averted. As Manwe was the head of the Council of the Valar, he did little to openly oppose and pursue his brother for his evils. Yet Manwe's compassion and heart were always foremost with the children of Iluvatar, even after the Noldor defied him and went into exile. He had Aule help fashion sun and moon to show the Eldar that they were not forsaken entirely by the West, and these were to give them and men hope. 
The Elder King also sent his eagles, led by Thorondor, to Middle-earth to aid them. Manwe does not have many explicit moments of action throughout the Legendarium, but those he does have usually depict him deciding upon important matters for the future of Arda, or praying to Iru for solutions and answers to issues. While I am not sure if Manwe was himself there in Beleriand to stop his brother during the War of Wrath, I know his herald Eonwe was, and Manwe's mercy did not save Melkor this time, who was exiled from the world. Manwe, like the other Valar, would take an increasingly removed role from Middle-earth, as the ages of the world went on. Yet he was still ever watching and was a present ruler of Middle-earth, sending fair winds to Numenor, Middle-earth, and over the wide oceans. He sent clouds in the shape of eagles as warnings to Numenor during its downfall, or right before it, and prayed to Iru to stop the Numenorians led by Arpharazon when they journeyed to Valinor for battle. Even in 3019 of the Third Age, it is my belief that the eyes of Manwe were watching Minas Tirith during its siege, as on the morning of March 15th, a fair wind from the south and the sea came unexpectedly, blowing away some of the darkness of Mordor, and aiding Aragorn's captured Corsair ships in making their way up the Anduin River and to the battle in time to save the city. The same wind blew away the evils of the Witch King and gave Frodo and Sam hope in Mordor. Manwe's love and compassion followed the children of Iluvatar forever, and it is said that he will keep lordship over Arda, even unto the end of the world and the Dagor Dagoroth, if that prophecy is to be believed, where the Elder King and his forces will do battle with his brother, the Dark Lord Melkor, and his servants. Though the two would not slay each other, their dichotomy will be present in that final battle, or so it is said. After that, Manwe will most likely aid the Ainur and his father Iru in the second music of the Ainur, after the death of his brother Melkor. Together, the Ainur and children of Iluvatar would rebuild the world of Arda, the kingdom of Manwe. And so we come to the end of our tale on Manwe the Elder King. From the story of Manwe, we see that we should try to stand as a pure and good beacon as to inspire others. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed this video on Manwe. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button and share this with a friend. What are your thoughts on Manwe? Let me know in the comments below. While Manwe is very pure and perhaps not as three-dimensional as even some of the other Valar, I like that this is the character who is the High King of Arda and is most like Iru, rather than one that is perhaps more tainted, as it depicts that Middle-earth and its people are ruled by a far more powerful force of compassion than one of destruction or evil. If you'd like to support the channel, please consider getting some candles from our friends Mythology Candles through the link in the description below, or check out our merch or Patreon. Thanks to our Valar tier patrons. Peter Shepard, Jonathan Putin, M. Mark Kralik, Blair Scout, Merton, John Hume, Sam McBee, Matt Sabatch, Elizabeth Calvert, Maz Gibbs, Reese Jenkins, Adam Petrulik, Brandon Glidden, Molly Sullivan, Daniel Burns, Anthony Harmon, Dorman Gray, Arthur Merlin, DJ Vaught, and Dale Davis. Thank you so much to all of our patrons and YouTube members. The support means a lot. Please subscribe and hit that bell button to join the Men of the West and all of the free peoples today. And I'll see you all again next Sunday with a region spotlight on Bree and its surrounding lands. You all are the best, my friends. Thank you all so much for joining me on this adventure. Until the next one.